Good afternoon. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Just bear with me a moment while I bring it all up on screen so I can see you all, see all your wonderful comments and love. Hello, Laura. Hello, Janine. I'm assuming it's Janine and not Keith watching. <laughs> okay. It is getting towards the end of my day and this is... Hello, Karen. Please don't be sorry, darling. I love your company. Um, this is live Facebook number four a day. This is day three. Three fours are 12. Holy moly. You guys must be totally sick of me. But I'm here, so let's commit to it. Hey, Beck, how are you, Dub? Beautiful. Okay, so as part of the great international craft show for the first one for January, no, were we in February? Um, I am doing three live mini classes and a bit of a morning chat every day. And today online on nataliemay.com.au. Hello, Amanda. Um, we have got 15% off of patterned paper. So what that means is for today only, uh, you can get 15% off patterned paper on my website. And we will be posting all of your orders on Monday and Tuesday. And if you are one of the lucky people who have ordered two or three times, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. And for those of you who don't know how you can do that, the really cool thing is, is that about over a year ago, I introduced during the shows this really cool thing called no judgment shipping, which means that you pay for shipping just one time and then Every order that you do after that, you select no judgment at the checkout and I will put all the orders together and post them all at the same time. So you can order multiple times over a show. Um, so that's a bonus for you guys and it makes my life a little bit easier as well because I don't have to pack, 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 pack and then try and find your order, etc. So 15% um, so off paper collections and packs today and I do have a little 30% off section as well so make sure you check that out and I also have a pre-loved section which has been heavily discounted as well to clear that out and there are some bargains in there especially if you like foam stamps okay so what are we doing today today's art journal page is going to be using the new magicals the Nanika's Outer Space collection uh, I am going to be doing a page that I taught many, many, many years ago. I decided today that I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel because I'm knackered, but I still love making pretty things. So this page I originally did at the Scrapbook and Papercraft Expo in Brisbane, June long weekend. And I'm going to say close to 10 years ago. I reckon it would be at least that. So this page might be familiar to some of you. But I'm going to show you how I did this page. And this is a very textural page. I feel the need to touch it and feel it and whatnot. So I'm going to talk you through how to do it. But I'm just going to do it on one side of the page to speed up the process because it's got lots of drying time all right so what i have got here is my large dilutions journal it is so this is an eight and a half by 11 page it is my my large journal and it is uh i have heavily gessoed my paper so what that means for those of you playing along at home is that I have sealed the paper with gesso. I have given it a really good coat of white primer to make sure that the paper become, is, is no longer porous so that it holds its um, 
or the liquid that I'm about to put on it. But before I do put any colour on it and any liquid, I want to collage up some background pieces first. So I have got some Dina Wakely um, collage paper here that I'm going to put on and I have got some washi tape and I have got some drywall tape and that's probably it but I'm just going to pop this on. All right so I've got here next to me some impasto gel medium. Uh, tomorrow at 1.30 I'll be doing a section alive called Natalie's Favourite Tools and I'm also going to do um, I'm going to do talk about mediums and my favourite mediums as well and what they are for. So you'll find that happening online tomorrow. Um, so what I want to do is I want to add some collage elements first. But the reason I want to use gel medium is because I want it to be stuck down really good. I want it to be really adhered to my page. Um, so I've just got myself a, a wide brush and I'm going to put it straight on like this. And I'm going to start building in the background some collage elements. Um, so when we are creating an art journal page, art journaling is lots of things to lots of different people. But for me, my art journal pages are just an expression of creativity. The opportunity to play and try something new and just get get my hands a bit dirty which i'm okay with um okay so this is from the dina wakely just words um collection of collage paper elements and i really do love this set this is easily one of my favorite um collage papers and i just keep reaching for it again and again and again but in saying that, that's because I'm a typography nerd. I love fonts. I love um, typing. I love drawing. I love words. I'm a total typography nerd. So this is right up my alley. Uh, so I'm just laying down a nice coat of gel medium, which is an excellent adhesive. Whoops, that's upside down. Don't want to use that piece. And then I'm, as you can see, I'm lightly... Brushing over the top as well to make sure that it has a nice even coat over the top. Now, I'm not using too much gel medium and that's because I don't want it to take an hour and a half to dry. Okay, so it's almost like a dry brush technique and just getting a little bit on here and there. And it's not taking... Like I said, not taking too long, but I'm making sure that I seal it as well. Okay. Radio, I'm going to pop those bits. You know what? I might actually do myself a favour and clean up as I go. Heaven forbid. Okay. Um, I might quickly add some of this bold font because although I'm repeating a page... I'm wanting to do something just a little different, of course. I don't want to go uh, too much same, same. So some of this bold print, while I've still got um, some glue on my brush. So the idea, like I mentioned before, of gessoing the background is it's to prepare the surface for what I'm about to put on the page. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to be adding a decent amount of water. So I need to make sure that the water is not going to soak in to the background because paper, of course, is porous, right? So if you spill your glass of water on the table, then it's going to soak into um, the surface, right? If you were to prepare your surface with gesso first it almost adds like a coat to protect it it seals it okay so that is what we are doing there all right so going back over the top also seals the paper a bit too 
So something else that you need to do with a gel medium is make sure that you clean your brush as well. Um, I'm just going to wipe it out nicely with a baby wipe because I'm going to also add, no, I'm not. I'm going to put it in the, put it in the sink. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Sorry about that. Now this is almost dry. It's a tiny, tiny little tacky, but now I want to add a little bit of gesso just to make the surface It'll have a little bit of a shiny um, surface to it. So I just want to, and that's the gel medium. I just want to now seal that so that it's all my background is a similar sort of surface because I'm going to be working with water. So I'm just going to, as you can see, doing it the super technical way with my fingers. And doing it with my fingers means that it's toning down some of these really bold images that I've got but it's also spreading it out and making it a little bit um, thinner so it won't take so long to dry. So I can put the next coat on, if that makes sense. Okay. So my surface now is all pretty much become a coat of gesso. And tissue paper, and there shouldn't be too much um, in the way of gel medium exposed to the background, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is you can add some washi tape if you have some washi tape. Uh, you could use some masking tape if you've got that. You could use dress patterns. In the background as well I have got some here in Australia we call it plasterers tape and it's just a white mesh it's available at Bunnings um, it's been around for years it is adhesive it is sticky and I'm just going to get it on even though the gesso is still a bit wet it adds texture it's adding the texture to the background and it is sticky. So uh, plasterers use it uh, to put walling together, I think it is. But this becomes the, the touchy element. Um, with an art journal page, I love to, the idea of being able to reach out and go, ooh, what does that feel like? Um, so I've got some of that and it cuts up beautifully um, so it is available at Bunnings available to everybody it is not something that I sell so please don't ask me for it um, I love to use things out of my personal stash as well when I am creating rather than always having to open a packet of something and because I've been crafting for uh, 27 million years it feels like um, I am I have quite a little selection of stuff as you could probably imagine all right so just cutting that off and doing the cleanup as I go thing right so the tape is on the page I know it's not showing up very much on camera uh, let me bring it up a little just to show you what we're up to So you can see all of that texture kind of going on in the background. Okay, so the next bit we're going to be doing is adding the stenciling. So the stenciling is, you could use any stencils that you like. You could use words. You could use a grid. You could use a, oh, look, you could use um, dots. You could use anything at all. I have got so many different stencils on the shelf at the moment. Um, I've got a great word one that I, I thought about using uh, and then I thought you know what for today's sake I'm just going to go with something that is comfortable so I'm going to use this Toledo Toledo one it's called um, and it is a stencil girl stencil and it's going to work quite well for this purpose 
sorry, drink break. Um, so I want something that is going to have a repeating pattern. So there's so many different stencils around. You can use whatever you feel the need for. Okay. Uh, the, where is my palette knife is the next question. Here it is. Okay, I'm going to use my catalyst tool and I'll talk about it this tomorrow. And I'm going to use some um, Reeves modeling paste. So what a modeling paste is going to do is uh, take a, I'm going to put a dob on the table and it's quite, quite heavy. It's going to take a little while, a little while to dry. Um, but I'm going to layer up my stencil, something like that. And then I'm just going to spread it across my page. So it's got to go across the stencil not going edge to edge i'm kind of putting it on in a thickness like you're putting peanut butter on toast if that makes sense and this would have been awesome if my stencil was clean i've just discovered it hadn't been cleaned from last time i used it but i'm just going this way i'm keeping some white space on that side of my project okay So modeling paste is going to dry with a body and a little bit goes a really long way and I really just overdid it on the squirt on the table there, but you know, that's okay. And then peeling it off is going to leave the pattern and just pop a little down the bottom here. Perfect. And now I've got that big glob there that I need to get back in the container. Um, what I'm actually gonna do, this one here, that there's heaps still on this, so I'm just gonna be a bit cheeky and use it as a stamp and lay it on top of that. And I'm going to use this excess and start like a second page on this side, um, which is probably not the smartest idea because that means I'm now going to probably put my hand or my arm in it. Oh, but you know, it's Saturday afternoon. Maybe I should have had a glass of wine instead of a Pepsi. And I'm just going to pop it in the sink to soak. Just so that the uh, so the modelling paste doesn't take 20 minutes to uh, dry on my stencil and then my stencil is ruined and needs scrubbing, <laughs> which is not ideal. All right. And that can go in the bin. Okay, so what I need to do now is make sure that this is 110% dry. So this is going to be your two minute interlude to go and pour yourself a glass of wine or a coffee. And this is just gonna take a little bit of time. So I would have loved to have pre-done this bit, but then you wouldn't have seen all the fun stuff underneath. Um, so somebody asked me the question yesterday, when you are doing something like this, could they use a hairdryer? A hairdryer pushes out blows out air. It blows more air than it does heat. Um, this blows out heat more than air, okay? There is a big, big difference between a heat gun and a hairdryer. This is a specialised tool, especially for this purpose. Um, if you're wanting to try something like this, you could pop it out in the sun for a couple of hours uh, to dry, but I would highly recommend having a a heat tool. It is going to do more benefit than anything else. So another little bit of a tip as well is opening up your page and drying from the other side because, like I mentioned before, paper is porous. So what happens 
is the moisture of the paste is going to go all the way through the paper. So drying it from both sides will actually speed up the process really, really well. So there you go. Hello, Alison. Alison Bevis, I see you watching me. How is your day going, my friend? Good, good, good. So you can see what's happening. We're building up a bit of a background here. Um, how do I know when it's dry? When my hand doesn't stick to it. And doing this just blows the air around everywhere. I'm more of a directional dryer, if you could say. I will heat set everything um, directional rather than blowing the air around. Are you learning lots from my live Facebooks, Alison? Well, that is good. Thank you for that feedback. Um, have you had the opportunity? Has everyone had the opportunity to go back and watch the other eight live books, uh, live Facebooks I have done? The, uh, if you scroll back down through my Facebook, you will see everything from alcohol inks through to um, playing yesterday with the new Tim Holtz die that he just released. Um, I did some stamping with Alter New layered stamps with the brand new Kitsch Flamingo colour from Tim Holtz as well. So um, plenty of educational tools. If you just scroll back down through my Facebook. Uh, the other thing is, is you can also jump onto YouTube and type in Natalie May and you will find all of my Facebook posts there as well, all my Facebook lives from previous events. All of the ones from 2021 will be there as well. Well, that is pretty much dry and I'm just going to add a little heat to this side because like I said, I'm going to stick my arm in it and then it's just going to go bad. Oh, thanks girls. So I get a 20 second delay here when I um, have the comments versus what I say. So uh, I have to apologize if you think I'm just totally ditzy. I mean, come on, let's be honest. I am a little bit, but that's okay. So I'm just going to let that sit and dry uh, for a couple of, I mean, it is dry, but just come back down to room temperature. And while I do that, I'm going to talk to you about the Lindy's colours. All right. I'm just getting a couple of bits of cardstock that I had prepared earlier so that we can make something pretty. And I can tell you all about these again while that page is just coming back down to town to temperature. So the Lindy's Magicals. Uh, Lindy's are a company that's been around for over 20 years. I think closer to 25 years. They are a well-established um, company in the States. Lynn's just commented and said, I make things look easy. Do you know why I, think I make it look easy? Because I've been doing it for more than 20 minutes, number one. Number two, I don't overthink anything. You've seen me make mistakes live on Facebook. You've seen me completely, completely shag up um, my creative, my creative little adventures and the things I'm trying to make. You've seen me do all of that live. Um, I don't take this super seriously, guys. Uh, this is my craft, my hobby. It's also my job. But I love this sport. I love paper crafting as a sport. And if it is hard, you are bloody well doing it wrong, okay? So that's why I make it look easy is because I have fun with it. All right, love? There you go. There's your pep talk for the day. Okay, so as the master educator for Lindy's, it's my job to tell you all about how to use this stuff and how to incorporate it in your projects. So yesterday... We did an art journal page and I'm just trying to think where I put the journal so I can show you. Oh, here we go. And I'm about to lose everything on the floor here. 
Oh, shit. Um, okay, so the whole idea of, of the Lindy's project is to show you how, well, for me with Lindy's, to show you how to use it in different ways. So yesterday we used, this is the Perspective Butterfly with this gorgeous colour set. And uh, you'll find a, a, some really nice up close detailed photos on Facebook as well as Instagram of this project. But this is using exactly the same colours that we are I'm about to use right now, okay? So that's the Perspective Butterfly dye and um, the Lindy's that we're about to use. The Lindy's Magicals are a pigment dye-based powder. So what that means is the pigment means it's full of colour. The dye means that it is permanent. And the powder means that we need to activate it to get the magic to happen. Because Lindy's have been around for a really, really, really long time, they have absolutely mastered this product. They got it right the first time. There are lots of companies that have tried to replicate this product, I think quite unsuccessfully, um, but they are fantastic. So these particular colours come in a set called um, Nanika's Outer Space, um, and we have got Galactic Teal, Martian Magenta, UFO Yellow, Alien Goo Green, Outer Space Aqua. So this one here is the Alien Goo Green. So it comes in a spray as well as the powder. This is Outer Space Aqua, which is this one here. That is absolutely lovely. I love that. Galactic Teal looks like this. This is, and they all have this gorgeous shimmer to them as well. So you can see that amazing shimmer happening. Martian Magenta looks like that. And um, I don't think the camera is doing this colour justice at all. And finally, UFO Yellow. This is beautiful. So the colours are really nice. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can use them. You can paint them on with a paintbrush. So I'm going to use them like a watercolour. They're not watercolours, okay? And this is really important because watercolours means they are going to reactivate again, okay? These are not watercolours. These are a pigment dye. They are a dye-based powder. So what that means is it is going to be, it's gonna stain your paper. It's almost like a permanent, a permanent um, colour. So I'm just putting a spoon of this. This is my Nouveau spoon. Um, but I'm just putting a little bit in here and then I'm going to activate this and just add some water. And you can see I'm using a, an amount half the size of my, my little fingernail and that is it. Um, I'm not going to use the magenta and the um, yellow today. I'm going to stick with, with these three colours. But I'm going to just show you how to mix them up and how awesome they are anyway, just while that background page is drying. Uh, so this page, this project this afternoon will take a little bit more than a quick little Facebook. Um, <laughs> but uh, you just have to stick with me on this one. And the UFO Yellow, which is quite a gorgeous light colour. Pop a little in there. So when I activate this powder, you can see how much is in here. Not very much at all. I have got a pipette, which um, I have a very lovely friend who works in the chemo ward that I spent a little time in. And she, every now and again, drops a few of these pipettes off in my letterbox. But I need to activate this powder. Okay, so just adding a little water. And pipettes you can pick up at your local chemist. I don't sell them because they get borrowed. They're donated to me. But you can see how amazing that colour looks as soon as you add some water. And there's that yellow. So I always swatch my colours before I start. 
every single project I do, you will always see me swatch my colours before I start. So I've just got a piece, piece of plain Kayser Craft cardstock, very non-fancy, and I'm just going to swatch the colours. And I'm going to do the um, magenta last because it's super duper dark. And you can see that I'm kind of stirring it a little bit just as I've activated it. Because that sounded very Aussie, didn't it? Activated. Activated. Galactic teal. So the other cool thing about this is now that I have tested all of these colours, I can make them more intense by adding more powder or I could make them less powerful by adding more water. I have control over this. And this is where the powders are different from the sprays, okay? So if I now want to make these... I want this green to be more green, I can add more powder to that mix and the colour is going to become more intense. I can add more magenta to that magenta and the colour is going to become more intense. But I don't want to do that. I quite like this mix. I'll bring it up to camera so you can see. You can see the yellow is beautiful and translucent. The green is just gorgeous. All right, so I'm not going to use that one or that one. So I'm going to take them out of that palette uh, because I will make a mess. So the way that I will do that is just get a piece of paper towel and put it in there and sop it up like that, okay? Hi there, Tina. Oh, someone, oh! Magdalena from Poland, welcome, my love. Now I'm becoming very aware of of my very bad Australian accent. <laughs> okay, so just another thing about the Lindy's Magicals. Of course, because they are a powder, you can mix them with anything. So that means that you can mix them with modeling paste or texture paste or gesso or paint or anything that you like. You can mix them in order to create a, you know, you don't need to buy a fancy overpriced coloured texture paste when you can make up your own to the colour that you want. Okay, so does that make sense? Um, you've got the control. The only thing they're not designed to do, they are not designed to go into a water spray bottle because they have a binder in them that will bind it to your paper and it will clog up your nozzle and make you swear like a truck driver i can tell you right now okie dokie so my background is dry so for those of you who have just tuned in i have got a base of gesso on my art journal page i then have added some tissue paper some collage paper from dina wakeley uh, with some gel medium uh, I then used my fingers to swipe on a little bit of gesso just to take the shininess off of that um, gel medium. I have then used a stencil and some modelling paste to get the texture so that it becomes my textural element. What I want to do next is I want to add the colour. Okay, so you can see here what's going to happen. Now, the other option that you've got is you can stamp or put an area where you want an image to go. So if you have some circle stamps or some lids, you can do that. Actually, why don't we do that? I'm going to put a stamped area here and here. I do have handy somewhere some circle stamps um, and then that will give me a guide to go around. Um, I do not have any circle stamps in stock at the moment. They are a little difficult to come by. Um, these ones that I've got here are Prima ones and I have had them since... I've had them so long they don't even stick to anything anymore. They are absolutely worn to death. But you could get a lid or a piece of tape and trace it. 
Uh, so I'm just going to do a couple of circles in black archival ink. So I have to use black archival ink because I'm going to be working with water. And I don't want my circle to disappear. Oh, again, all of Siri is a nosy cow on my watch. She continually, yes, actually, Stina, Tina, Stina, <laughs> Tina, uh, circles are on my list of things to be creating for my next dance collection. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I have released my own stamps earlier. Uh, middle, middle of last year and I'm currently working on my next range. It is something that I'm doing for me to make me happy and um, doing a few, I'm actually in the process of edging, educating, edumacating, educating myself on how to work with the artwork and get the artwork happening at the moment so I've been taking some after hours classes to learn how to do that now if you don't have any circle stamps and you can't wait for me to bring out my next selection the lid of your magicals container that is a circle stamp if you dip it in some um, some black ink okay does that make sense and I just want to do that little stamp um, so yes, I started on um, educating myself on a few bits and pieces. How long for my stamps? It's not going to happen today, Michelle. I can tell you right now. Um, I've got a lot happening in my um, overworked little brain. I can tell you. But it's, um, and I just don't seem to have enough hours in the day. But I'm working on it, okay? Everything, every, baby steps are, are a thing. Okay, so I've got something here for me to work around and now I'm going to use um, a, a round brush. <laughs> um, sorry, Michelle, I just got your comment. Um, a round brush. So the reason I want to use a round brush is because a round brush has is going to hold lots of liquid, okay? I want something that is nice and juicy and going to hold plenty of colour. So I've got my colours made up um, and I'm putting them here in the order that I have got them in. Sorry, drink break. And now I'm going to start with my lightest colour. I'm using a decent amount of colour on my page, okay? I'm not going to be stingy and I'm not going to worry about putting on too much liquid. Um, I've got my book on a bit of an angle so that I can direct it around my page a little. Now, green is not normally my favourite thing at all. And that is because, um, oh, well, the reason I'm using it is because I'm going to be building up the colour to get head towards these two darker tones. All right, so you can see how big and bold that is. Now, going into this next one, I didn't even bother rinsing my brush. I'm just going to puddle it in, pick up, let it run down a little, guide it around my circle, and it's starting to move around my page. Now, this technique that I'm doing is, um, for those of you who have just tuned in, it is certainly not a new technique. I've decided this afternoon to not try and reinvent the wheel again, but I'm, I'm doing something that I taught at a big scrapbook expo maybe 10 years ago. Um, it was quite a while ago. I'm going to turn my book now, and I'm going to work on a bit more of an angle like this and I'm going to add some water now I'm going to get my water spray not any particular sort of water not fancy anything and I'm just lightly spraying that to get it to bleed down now I've got some paper towel handy and I need to make sure that I catch it in the spine 
And this big one here that it's about to drip, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna dab it off. Okay, so it's a real movement thing, okay? I need to watch what's going on to the point that this paper towel has got its own danger level. Backup glasses, all right. So you can see what's starting to happen. We're moving it around. Now I'm not gonna add the depth in just yet. I'm going to just work with these two light colors for the time being and then my depth will come in shortly when I have dried off this coat because this is going to, it's all about layers, okay? We're building up color and we're letting it soak into the page, letting it move around um, and there we go. So if I didn't seal the paper with gesso, it would have soaked in by now and the page would have been a little on the ruined side. See that? Don't like that. Dry it off. Dab it off. Um, so the idea is, is you can use the gesso to stop it dripping around the page, okay? Stop it, um, sorry, soaking into the page. And I'm gonna dry off this now before, not dry it off completely, just stop the big drips before I add the next level. Right, that's dry enough. It's just, it's not puddling, it's just enough. Now I'm gonna get in with this deep color. Oh, that makes me happy. Now, because this color does have so much depth, I'm working on this side and I'm just gonna move it. I'm watching what's going on here because I've got a big drippy puddle here. Tilt, lift. Now, the other key thing that's making this page work is the colours that I have chosen. I've chosen colours that are on the same side on the colour family, right? So that means that if I mix them together, they are not going to make brown. Uh, the colour choice is so very important, uh, especially with this sort of technique, because if I was to do this with yellow and purple, I'm going to make a fabulous shade of revolting. Um, I'm going to make a fabulous shade of brown, because when you mix those two colours together, it makes brown. If I mix a red and a green together, if I wanted to use that purple, then of course it would have, um, it would have made brown. It would have been awful. So I need to stick with colours that are alongside each other on the colour wheel. This page could do with a little bit of blue. So I'm going to grab a Another colour, I've got a bit of delphinium turquoise. So I'm just going to add a little of that. So I've got my little spoon. And I have got some, let's pretend it's clean water. Oh, that's better. Look how pretty that is. All right, so now I'm going to add some of this blue. Oh, that's better just for a bit more depth. So I've got the ability to be able to move it, tilt it, let it do its thing, move it around. Okay. So it's when you start to work down in this bottom section that I have to watch what happens at the top section as I'm tilting. <laughs> So I've just popped my piece of paper towel there to catch some drips while this magic is happening up here. It's about patience. Good things come to those who work their asses off, but good things also come to those who have the little bit of patience to build the colour and build those backgrounds up together, okay? 
just going to hit that with the heat gun quickly. And you'll notice I've got no brush strokes around this end. What's happening with this water is, is because it's sitting on top of gesso, the colour is blooming when I spray with the water and it will take away any, any brush strokes. It'll take away those drips, okay? But I'm loving how that looks. And that little bit of blue that I didn't realise that I needed is looking pretty great. So as I'm going around now, I can direct with my heat tool the colour and I can add a little bit more colour, I can build it up a little. And I reckon that's all I'm going to do for getting colour on, okay? But the colour of this, this intensity is starting to look pretty great. I'm really thrilled with it. But I just do need to give it a second to dry so that I can work on my circles next. So let me get you some, um, it's like on hold music, isn't it? And I'll bring it up to camera as soon as I just get the dampness off of this page, just to show you that, that depth of colour. But because, uh, because I've used so much liquid and so much water, it does take a little bit to dry. And that's where making sure that you've got a good coat of gesso down on your background first will pay, like if, you know, it'll certainly help to do that. Um, the way that I do it is I put a, a really good brush coat of gesso down with a paintbrush. Then when that's 110% dry, I will use a, um, put another coat on, but I'll use a brayer to spread it out a little bit, okay? So what a brayer will do is just um, spread it out and just adds it in, in a different sort of layer. But that's only if I'm going to do something like this where I have got a... Um, a lot of water going onto my page. So the page on the other side, and I will turn the page and show you in a minute, the page on the other side is going to have a little bit of water damage through it, but it means that that will be a page that I add collaging to or a gel press print to, I just to get a little bit smart about how I um, cover it up. But like I mentioned before, because because we're working with liquid, we still need to dry it from both sides, okay? So I always do this. I always come in from this side and make sure that it's dry all the way through. In fact, oops, sorry, just bumped the camera. In fact, if I turn the page, there's absolutely no bleed all the way through Nothing through to the next page at all. Nailed it, guys. Absolutely nailed it. Okay. Let me bring it up to camera. Let me give you a good look. So you can see here where I sprayed it to get it to bloom out, right? So that it didn't... It didn't um, leave me brush strokes and lines, okay? This little bit of pink here is probably because I might have had a bit of overspray or that stencil was dirty. I can cover that up with gesso at the end if I need to, if I'm going to be that worried about it, okay? Now, do I want to do anything else to this with these colours? Not at this stage, so I'm going to pop this 
aside so I don't send it flying. Um, and I'm just quickly going to tidy up these edges so that it's giving me a little bit more perspective of the page and I can see what I am working with because I had a little bit of overlap with my collage elements. Oh. So have you all had a nice day? I have spent my entire day in the studio here creating, which has been fabulous for me because at the moment I'm doing a lot more um, paperwork, website rubbish. Fabulous stuff, not rubbish, but I need to, um, I would like to be doing a little bit more behind the scenes. All right, in the creating side of things. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to make my circles whiter than white. I want to make them super juicy white. Uh, let me just see if I can find, here we go. And I might just get rid of my mat underneath. So the mat that I'm working with underneath, for those of you who are wondering um, what it is, it is a puppy training pad. It soaks up water and liquids uh, beautifully, especially when I am filming. Because I tend to be a little messy, oh, okay, I tend to be a lot messy, I, I use the puppy training pads with magicals to catch any overspray. Um, so that is my my secret go-to weapon. I actually travel with them as well if I'm crafting so that it gives me a, you know, protection over a coffee table or something like that. It's a little trick that I've been using, again, for about 10 years. Um, okay, so what this is. This is the 13 Arts Acrylic Ink from Poland. Um, I love 13 Arts. I am wonderful friends with... Um, Aida, who used to Domasiewicz, I think is her pronunciation. Um, Ada, who, who owns 13 Arts, I've known her for years and years. Um, and one of the previous designers as well, Olga, uh, lovely friends with her. So what I want to do is I'm going to use this white ink to, um, to whiten my circles. And also, I'm thinking I'll use it to you could use gelatos actually that might work um i'm just going to put this dropper here useless doesn't drop anything it's blocked never works with the bottles don't stress about it if you've got one um, i'm going to use a paintbrush to get in there and paint that um but this is a really really nice white puts in a really nice white coat. If you have a really good quality white paint, that will also do the trick. Uh, if you have any bleed, if you do this with colors such as a pink or a red, that is a lot harder to color those, cover those colors. They will, whites tend to bleed with those because they're so heavily pigmented um, and anyone who has done art journaling and if you've tried to cover up anything with um, anything with a pink background and you try to put white over the top you'll always find that it never works um, but this splash ink is an excellent product um, it doesn't take long to dry either But yes, gelatos would work if you had a white gelato, um, a white scribble stick, which of course is acrylic paint, but I want to really, actually a white scribble stick probably would have worked better today. I might dry this off and then put scribble stick over the top. Ooh, that's an idea. Sorry, I'm sidetracked. I'm not reading the comments. There we go. Um, for those of you who are new to my creating, um, I have been working and teaching in scrapbooking in Australia and New Zealand now for probably, I wanna say 17 years. Um, 
a really long time. This is not my first time. I have been working in a store here in Australia which closed down a few years ago and then uh, have my own business now here at home and over the last 12 months have taken myself online and building up my little web store and I've been doing classes here in Adelaide for some years and have a fabulous group of ladies here who um, I love and respect dearly so uh, I teach around been, like at events and thank you Tina um, teaching at events around Australia uh, the big expos in Queensland. I toured Australia as the guest artist for the Craft and Quilt Fair for 12 months, which was fantastic, doing little free demonstrations and little mini classes. I did love doing that and meeting most of you that way. So now I've decided that this year I'm going to be doing online education as well as once a month there will be an online in-depth Facebook class that you can join which is a private group so um, you will find the information about that on classes on my website okay I'm just going to get my scribble sticks out the drawer because I think that that will work really well here uh, if I choose, I've got my white here, is that the white one? Yep. And I want to add a little bit of dimension to my circle. Oh my God, Michelle, Michelle has just commented that she's coming to my retreat and I can tell you what, I'm so freaking excited that she's coming to my retreat. Actually, I'm so damn well excited that you're all coming all of the people that are coming are going to the retreat. We have just decided to, to go ahead and plan our uh, a scrapbook retreat here in the Adelaide Hills. And I have quite a number of people coming from interstate. So if you are interested in coming, there is a COVID policy. If for whatever reason the world closes down again, you know, it can happen. Um, we have that in place and we, we work it all out. Um, okay. So yeah, if you want some more information about that, you need to jump onto my blog, which is Happy Dax. I will find that bit of paper and put it on that. Oh, sorry. Um, here you go. That's the information about my blog. Uh, someone's just commented, is the cruise still happening? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, if you want to cruise with me, I am cruising in November. Leslie, you're feeling old. Oh, Leslie, darling, I call bullshit on that, doll. Excuse the language, but seriously, come on. Um, you are not too old at all. All right, I'll come back to the retreat stuff in a minute. What I've got here is a couple of colours in scribble sticks. So this is a fuchsia. Okay, so what the scribble sticks are, for those of you playing along at home, they are acrylic paint in a stick. They are not crayons. There is nothing crayony about them, but they are acrylic paint in a stick. So they work great. So they're going to go over the top of this really, really nicely. Sorry, I covered that up for those of you. Um, so I'm going to make up a little puddle here of white, which is not going to show up very well on camera. And I've just made a little puddle of this one here. Oh, look, it's not white. It's pink because I used dirty water. Well, that was very clever of me. Okay. So now I'm going to give this a little dimension. And it's nothing more than following the curve of the circle like that every circle has to have the same curve and I can take my little bit of ink that I had floating there there's a little drop just in there um, yeah so the cruise is happening as well if you would like to come on an art journaling cruise with me 
that's happening in November this year. So I have decided to teach an art journaling cruise and it is going to be here in Australia and it is going to be from, where are we going? Where are we going, Wendy? We are going from Sydney to, I've had a brain fade. Sydney, Brisbane, Airly Beach and back, I reckon. Oh, I had a total brain fade. Um, so yeah, and it's an art journal increase. So there's going to be a minimum of four classes. Oh, there you go. Sydney to Ellie Beach. Oh, that's right. Pina, you're coming too, aren't you, babe? Oh, how exciting. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that. You get an art journal. You'll get all sorts of stuff. I haven't started planning the classes yet because, you know, life. Um, but the idea is you will come on the cruise and either learn to art journal they will be there'll be all sorts of classes um there'll be some simple ones there'll be some more in-depth ones there will be classes that you will be will be apps that you'll probably love there'll be classes in there that you'll be able to turn into your own um i just can't wait okay so you can kind of see what i'm doing here well hopefully you can um I'm using, putting it straight on. So I started off with a base of the scribble stick and it just wasn't intense enough, but I had to commit to it to make it consistent all the way. And now I'm using a combination of the scribble sticks and a wet brush to give it a little bit more shape. So the scribble stick straight onto here. So yes, the cruise will um, entail Plenty of art journaling, um, plenty of materials in the kits as well. I'm thinking about all the different things that are going to be happening. Um, there's going to be the opportunity to cocktail and craft because, you know, that's a thing, guys. Uh, but it's all going to be all about colour. It's going to be fun. I love the idea of it. Um, my sister, the lovely Louise, who is very possibly watching, she's got this vision in her head. Now, feel free to laugh out loud. Louise is, um, for those of you who don't know, Louise is not a crafter. She is a people person. She is my, has come in and rescued me this year or last year, um, helping me with my website. And Lou, um, I've just introduced her to the incredibly talented Vicky Booten and how awesome Vicky is at getting on and doing the lives and doing her own product range, etc. Now, Vicky and I have actually been friends for quite a few years and I have worked and taught alongside Vicky at, uh, at a big event in New Zealand um, and love the hell out of Vicky. We are wonderful and she does chat Who's Jerry? What are you talking about? Um, we do we do chat regularly as well. Um, she will FaceTime me on a regular basis, etc. Anyway, so um, Louise Louise is convinced that she's going to turn me into the Australian version of Vicky Booten. So um, because Vicky and I are very very similar personalities, which is super funny. Um, I think that she's dreaming because Vi nobody wants to fill those shoes. Vicky's an incredibly talented person. Love the hell out of her. So very funny. Um, and I absolutely adore her creativity. So we were having a nice little laugh about that the other day. All right. So can you see what's happening here? I'm starting to build shapes, give my circles some dimension. What is, what's going on here? What is my, what's this Jerry thing? What are you saying? Jeanette, blah. Jerry Higgins. Oh, okay. Well, that's a bit freaking weird, mate. Not the time or the place to be twerking it, working it, um, et cetera, et cetera. But that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I just read that. 
Um, okay, so anyway, so yes, Vicky and I are fabulous. And it's funny because when we were teaching together at a, an event in New Zealand, um, I do, at this big event in New Zealand um, with the lovely Michelle Widows, Vicky was teaching in the room next to me. Um, I, we were both teaching at exactly the same time. And one of the lovely attendees walked into the room and said, you know how you were just singing that song? And I went, yeah. She goes, Vicky is in there singing exactly the same song at the same time and you didn't even know it. Um, because we kind of sing when we're working. Because we all have like spectacular freaking voices. Um, anyway, so that was absolutely funny. So Vicky and I, are, uh, I have an enormous amount of respect for her as a crafter and a human being. So... Um, anyway, totally sidetracked there. Okay, you can see what's happened here. My circles, except for that one, have got shape and dimension. We have got a, they've got a little bit of love to it. I can give them a little bit more depth, um, which I think I need to. And I might do that with some eggplant, but I'm not going to do it straight onto my page first. I'm going to like I do with my magicals, work on the side first and pull it from there. And when I am confident, and only when I am confident, I will add it to the, um, the page direct. But until then, I can go with baby steps and just add a little. Now, this is a different product because it is acrylic paint. So it is going to sit differently. It's going to look a so now i'm a bit more confident about getting in there straight in um but the yeah they they sit and they they react differently to what the magicals do there's no reason why i have to stick with one um medium all the way through i can mix them up okay see that's a bit better um, okay, so yeah, the retreat. I can't wait. So the retreat is uh, the 21st, I think, and 22nd of May. We have called it the Creative Escape Retreat. It is the opportunity for you to come in and create and do your own thing and finish some projects and allow some, oh, shit, allow some creative time for yourself because we just don't do that, do we? Like, I know I don't. You know what my creative time is? The time that I give to myself to create at the moment is not just doing this, which is pretty good, but you know the thank you notes that you get with your order? Those little, those little thank you cards that I hand write out. I hand write, for those of you who haven't ordered with me, if you do an order, you will get a handwritten little piece of that's a, it's an index card that I will create a little piece of art on. And that is my opportunity to create. And I'm doing it for you guys. So there you go. Um, last night, when I needed to turn the computer off and watch some shit TV, um, I sat and wrote out a hundred or so little thank you cards. And tonight, I am planning on sitting and having a glass of wine or seven and doing some um, stamping on the front of them, okay? So there you go. All right, I'm fluffing around here and I have been for a while. So I'm gonna bring it up to camera so you can see what I have done in a bit more detail. All right, and down the bottom there. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only thing that I will do to finish this page off is, I really like those colours actually, um, is I'm going to grab a black pen and it is a black Sharpie sort of pen and I'm just going to make some of this darker and deeper just to give this... Um, Stamping a little bit more identity as part of the page. Um, it's not a difficult page. It has taken me an hour and I have 
not reinvented the wheel. Like I said, I have just taken a art journal page that I have taught before, an art journal page that I page that I've created before, and reinvented it in different colours. Um, so for those of you who have just joined in, um, this will be uh, available for you to watch very shortly. I will save it. You will be able to go back and watch it any time. But I have used uh, the brand spanking new, super gorgeous colours from Lindy's Gang. The new Magicals that have just come out, uh, which I absolutely adore. And I have used them in a nice intense way and I've actually paired them up with some scribble sticks and some white acrylic ink. So jump online to nataliemay.com.au a you and buy all the things actually no don't but yeah go on no look just just 15 percent off papers for today we have almost sold out of the ab studios paper that arrived two days ago um but there are heaps and heaps and heaps of papers on special at um at 15 percent off we even have a 30 percent off section that you can get your hands on uh, okay, now I need a phrase to go on here. Someone give me a kick-ass phrase that I can write in this section because my page must have wording. What have I got, guys? Come on, come at me. There's that 20-second delay kicking in. Normally, I would just go through Pinterest and go see how I'm feeling. I'm going to have a drink break and I'm going to use my Natalie May stubby holder. Look at that. It's a bit dirty, but. Circle of life. Oh, I like that. It's a little deep. What else you got? Michelle's winning so far. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You are awesome. Oh, come on, Tina. I know. Don't let anyone burst your bubble. Bam! Kelly! Oh, just do it. Oh, I like that. Don't let anyone burst your bubble. I like that one. Let's go with it. Thanks, Kel. Create the life you love. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I like Kelly's. Don't let anyone burst your bubble. Okay, I'm going to go with that. So, uh, I tend to not overthink my art journal pages too much. Um, so, I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with, uh, just, just write it on there. Um, now I can't remember what it was. Life is an opportunity to show them who you are. Damn freaking right, Delfina. Um, except for I can't spell all those words today. Where's Kelly? Don't let anyone burst your bubble. Done. And it's all up my arm. Okay, you can stop with the quotes, we're good. But thank you for your input. Okie dokie. Um, so I'm going to take a photo of this little gem. Um, one thing that you guys might not be able to see on camera is it all has a freaking brilliant shine to it as well. Um, the Lindy's Magicals, of course, have all got that gorgeous, gorgeous shimmer. In underneath that stenciling, you can see the tape, you can see the collage paper, you can see all of those elements coming through. The idea is, is you just, you want to be able to look into the page and see how you're feeling at the time. And that's really, really awesome. Um, in fact, I love this page a little bit more than I love my original page which looks like, oh, hang on, the crayons everywhere. The very first original page that I did maybe 10 years ago is this one here, and that's just using two colours of Lindy's, which was, oh, Sweet Violet Purple Teal and Witch's Potion Purple. So um, in the purples, it does work quite nicely as well. Okay, and I did use gelatos for those circles. But I think I like this page more um, because those colours are just divine. All right, guys, that's enough from me for tonight. Um, 
If you get seasick, look away now because I'm going to take the camera off the tripod without dropping it. Hang on. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm going to give you a quick little check out my mess thing going on here. And I'm deadly serious about check out my mess. There is crap absolutely everywhere. Um, I've got to turn this way so you don't see what's on the wall behind me. Um, yeah, I did sweep up from before. Um, but here is what's happening in the studio. It is a, um, a mess of orders at the moment. So this is what's happening with your online orders. We are collating all of your orders so that, um, so that you can add to your orders. So tomorrow's special, which will be just as great, you will be able to add to your order. So here they all are here and we're going to do that. So you can order again tomorrow and choose the no, no judgment postage. Um, I'll give you a quick bit of an idea. I've got lots of other magicals as well. So here is a um, quite a few more magicals. Plus, I do have some in these little containers. Oh, shit. Um, what light do I use for filming and what tripod for my phone? Tina has just asked me. It is one that I just got off of Amazon, actually, love. Um, I just looked up, I think it's Niwa is the brand. Um, and then I got the clasp for, um, it all came with light and tripod together, Um yeah, and then I got the um, the clasp for it to fit my phone. Um, yeah, so there's a lot happening tomorrow as well, girls. So I will be back at 9 a.m. I'm going to turn the camera around. Are you ready for a tired face? <gasps> With no filter. Anyway, so, um, and greasy slicked back hair. There we go. Oh, where we go? Um, but yeah, so I will be back here tomorrow morning at nine, give you a bit of an update on what's happening during the day. And, um, I do have three more live Facebook classes tomorrow. So I know that one of them will be the tools, how to use tools or my favorite tools, because I really enjoyed doing that last time. Uh, I think I was going to do an art journal page and what else is on my wall? Give me a second. Can't read that from here. Still can't read that from here. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot happening tomorrow as well as a lot from the last day of the sale. So you'll be able to get 15% off papers between uh, now and midnight. Um, probably when I go to bed. Um, yeah, the sale runs for the rest of the weekend. And then tomorrow... At the end of the day is when the sale finishes. So, um, sorry guys, I'm just standing in front of the light here because when I'm filming in the studio, I can't have my LED lights going because they um, flicker and give me a bit of a seizure. Oh, they give everybody a seizure actually. So, um, anyway, that's enough from me. Have a fabulous evening, guys. I will be around to answer your questions. Um <sighs> But I'm going to try and stay offline from here until probably tomorrow morning. So please don't be offended if I don't reply straight away. But I've been on Facebook since 8 o'clock this morning. So wash your hands, kiss your kids, jump online to nataliemay.com.au and cheers to you, Bevis. Love your face, miss your face. And I'm going to um, go and have myself a drink.